So with the NATO summit officially underway here in D.C., we wanted to take a closer look at its significance and why it matters to you at home. That's right. Joining us for this discussion is Dr. Amy Austin Holmes, a professor with George Washington University and a NATO expert. Thank you so much for joining with us today. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. We wanted to dive right in because there's so much context we wanted to extrapolate on. Speaking of which, it is a presidential election year, which is huge, and all eyes are on President Biden right now. Uh, can you help me explain, you know, Americans are watching this. What should they understand about his performance and the importance of it at this summit? Sure. So I think um, a lot of people have been concerned after the Biden's debate performance about, you know, the next uh, his ability to continue for another four years if he were to be elected in November. Um, and all eyes will be on him again at the NATO summit. But I do think that this is a moment where NATO is celebrating 75 years of its, uh, you know, since it was founded. And it's a moment where I think we as Americans can actually take pride in because through both Republican and Democratic administrations for 75 years, NATO has, um, you know, maintained its unity and is actually arguably the most successful military alliance in modern history. So let's talk about some of the expectations for this summit. By Friday, what are we going to say came out of this? So I think what's happening in, in Ukraine is clearly going to be front and center at a lot of the discussions that they're having. Um, just today or yesterday, there was another horrific Russian attack against a children's hospital in, in Kiev. Um, I was in Ukraine last summer where I was teaching a course at the Kiev School of Economics, and so I'm very familiar with you know, the, how the battlefield has changed over time. And, and Kiev has been relatively protected because of its air defense system, but this attack recently shows that, um, you know, the air defense systems are not impregnable and that they can actually inflict really horrific damage on the capital of, of Ukraine and Kiev. So does this create an appetite among <clears throat> the NATO allies to bolster Kiev's and Ukraine's air defenses? I think that, that, well, that's what Ukraine is asking to join NATO, and um, there are some of uh, the other NATO members who are supportive of that, particularly some of the NATO members in Eastern Europe. Uh, Poland, for example, um, provides 4% of its GDP as, as its NATO contribution. So, you know, there's been this debate about whether our European allies are doing enough to contribute to their own defense. Um, and now I believe 23 of the 32, 32 mem NATO members have met that 2% threshold. Mm -hmm. uh, but some are doing even more, like Poland, um, and some support Ukraine joining NATO, um, whereas others, including the United States and, and Germany, have been a bit more um, cautious because of the Article 5, um, which would essentially mean that we would be obligated to come to Ukraine, Ukraine's defense in the midst of this war. I think sometimes people hear even the term foreign policy and their ears turn off. And so as people are watching this, you know, at home, sitting in their living rooms going, why should I care? Well, how do you make this matter to the average American and what should they know about the summit? Sure. So. If, if anyone can, can read uh, our national security strategy and our national defense strategy, which are you know, unclassified, there, there's also classified versions, but there is an unclassified version that anyone, anyone can read. And a key aspect of that national security strategy is what we call integrated deterrence, which means that we rely for our defense and the deterrence of adversaries on our huge network of allies and partners around the world. And NATO is very central to that. Um, and so what makes us strong, you know, as the United States is this huge network of allies and partners that we have, which Russia doesn't have, China doesn't have. And so that really sets us apart in addition to other factors, of course. So in layman's terms, I mean, this is our way of just really getting to look our friends in the eyes and bolstering that, that mm -hmm. friendship, those alliances that we have. And that's why this is so important. Exactly. It's all about, um, you know, our, our network of allies and partners. And that's what, you know, we're here to celebrate or the NATO members are here to celebrate in, in D.C. Yeah, and a bunch of new world leaders, and so everyone will be sizing each other up and certainly mm -hmm. sizing up the president after the abysmal couple of weeks that he has had. Dr. Holmes, we certainly appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you.